I had to, as a 10 year old, be ready to not mm -hmm. just exit a building, but to put my body on the line so that my dad can get away. What can God do with a son of a fugitive, troubled youth, when he fully gives his life to Christ? That's what we're going to talk about with Adam Perez today. Moved 26 times growing up. I just learned that. And God's doing big things in this young man's life. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thanks. Adam, Glad to be here. Adam and I are close. We've spent a lot of years in um, uh, ministry, mm -hmm. a lot of fun years in uh, watching uh, him just kind of, Mike, as we're sitting here, you're very creative. Matt. Adam has always had this ability to come into a circumstance and touch it, and it blows up so much <laughs> bigger than him. And what he's able to bring about uh, uh, through um, his ideas about helping um, uh, um, the community. Mm -hmm. I remember one day Adam actually, and I'm going I'm to jump in here, and then we'll go out. Adam actually had uh, the city of uh, Bakersfield downtown he had the city shut down as far as a route for a kind of a parade. Huh. And so he was told the day before, two days before, two yeah. days before that they weren't going to be able to do it. Yeah. And so <laughs> and I was on I, the news, radio, everything. I, Adam called me, me and no. we prayed and we just knew that God would make something bigger than what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he negotiated with the city and they gave him the, um, the uh, um, what, Civic Auditorium. Yeah, or it was Robo Bank Arena Robo at Bank the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. you can, wow. you can, yeah. So I'm just saying, it, you, it comes into a, 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 a moment where there's pressure. He's like, Tom, you just got to pray for me because uh, uh, I, I got to make some decisions. And they told me that I can't have my parade route. Yeah. <laughs> After they had told me yes. Yes. After, after they, they approved, told me yes. I got signatures, everything. Yeah. 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 So, so, so that tells you that it doesn't have to um, uh, um, get approval because they can rescind yeah. the approval. Yeah. I learned that very quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember the panic in my voice when I was talking. I said, oh my gosh, I can't. I just, I'm calling you for prayer. And, I remember that. and, and we I prayed was, and, was, and so God special. upgraded. That's a yeah. key, I think. Yeah. Don't you, Adam? Yeah, absolutely. Waiting absolutely. for God's upgrades. Well, I think, I think oftentimes we, we don't know what's good and what's bad. You know, we're terrible judges. I'll speak for me. I'm a terrible judge for what's good and what's bad. And, you know, when you pull yourself out of the circumstance and let him be the judge, ultimately what you'll find is that with him it's always not just good, it's better. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's better. So yeah. so we, we let in with this idea of you, of you being the son of a fugitive, yep. moving a bunch. Let's yeah. talk about how, like, how did that all come about and... Yeah, well, you didn't have a part of that, but you had to live it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. what was it like growing yeah. up in that? It was totally my decision. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Decided to run from the law. No, uh, yeah, my dad, you know, my dad, he, he, he lived a very uh, hardcore life, you know. He, he made some decisions early on that got him a lot of respect in all, all the community of where all things were bad. All the, and, all the wrong yeah, places. All the wrong, <laughs> he, he got respect in all the wrong places and, and got a lot of respect from a lot of the big wrong people. And so... Um, what that led to was just a, a life of crime. You know, he used to deal. He used to, I mean, you name it, uh, he did it and he did it big and he did it right. I mean, he's kind of like the, he was like kind of like the drug dealer version of who I am now, right? He just <laughs> put on these big events, you know, and, and was very successful at them. <laughs> so the big take? Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. And so, yeah, that's really, that was a good one. <laughs> Not the big give. The yeah, big right, just a big take. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, I, you know, we, I'd been running from the cops with my dad from the time I was, gosh, I, first time he went in, I think I was four years old. He did mm. about six years, seven years, came out, kind of jumped into the, you know, picked up right where he left off. I, I'd see him. I wouldn't. I'd be living with my grandma. I'd be living with my parents. And then eventually, you know, everything caught up and, and uh, we had to go. You know, I, I'll never forget the day. Um, he traded a he traded a Corvette because right, that's how my dad rolled for a little Hyundai Accent hatchback, huh. little four door, little beater, uh, just so that he can get out of the area because everybody was on his. You know, he had SWAT. He had, I mean, you name it. You know, they were on him. I, I whatever it, law enforcement there yeah, was. Yeah, whatever there was in the there area. There was an APB and, out, and he was and he was so slick and so always a step ahead. 
So we moved every, I mean, I, w I moved to, we lived in six different states, Georgia, Colorado, Arizona. I mean, you name it, we were everywhere. I lived in Mexico for some time. And then um, I, I, every time it was just a different school. I was, I was so used to being the new kid that I'm almost grateful for it because that's how I'm so social now <laughs> with people. I'm like, oh, hey, you know, I don't know hey, it's you. It's the new guy. Yeah, it's, I was the new guy all the time. But yeah, it was, it was an incredible journey, um, very challenging. I had to be a professional liar. You know, I had to know how to recognize exits. And this isn't one of those like, oh, I'm just a dude and I have to have my back to the wall. It was like, no, I literally had to be ready at the drop of a dime to exit a building, a restaurant, whatever, wherever we were, whatever we were mm. doing. I had to, as a 10 year old, be ready to not mm. just exit a building, but to put my body on the line so that my dad can get away, you know? And so it, it was definitely a, interesting life so how did that yeah. affect you growing up well i mean i you talk about uh, separation anxiety right you yeah. talk about oh my gosh uh where am i going to sleep today where are we going to be in this state are we going to be in that state mm. there'd be times where i'd go to a school and i would just flat out not care i'd put on a different identity you know i'd be the cool kid at one school and i, I wouldn't care i'm going to be gone in two weeks anyway or three months mm -hmm. or two months and and so it, it had a huge impact on me I think negatively, but for some reason, you know, I, I like to believe that God's hand was on me even then. Um, I just, I don't know. I just always had this ability to somehow make something great out of it. I just, yeah, you, it was you know, an when adventure. You, when me. you say that, Adam, and we'll go to more of your story in Ministry Matters, another show. But when you say that God had a bigger thing, was there somebody in your life that was praying for you and your yeah, father? Yeah, absolutely. My grandma. Yeah. My grandma. Was it his oh, mom? Oh my gosh, his mom. Okay. Yeah. Praying mothers. Oh gosh. Wait, if you're oh. running from a praying mom, <clears throat> stop you it right now. You don't stand a chance. Oh, that, stand that's a chance. cool because that's how I ended up in church too was my praying grandma. Really? So, yeah. But yeah. Uh, hear more about that. Oh, she taught, she taught me my prayers. You know, I, I was raised Catholic with her. And my family, you know, my parents eventually, when my dad changed his life, he became Catholic. You know, it, it was through Catholicism. But my grandma taught me my prayers. She taught me the importance of praying and mm -hmm. really believing that there is a God and not just believing that there is a God, but having respect. So it was really, yeah, my grandma was oh, so essential. So Adam, would, you, would you tell if people out there that if they're play, praying for an estranged loved one, don't give up? Yeah, no. <laughs> Gosh. So absolutely not. I mean, I, I don't know if this is a conversation for right now, but yeah, don't ever quit prayer. Prayer, people say, well, all we can do is pray. If only they knew that that's the most powerful the most thing powerful. that they can do. Yeah, Because yeah. people don't see something happen from there, or they may not be able to experience it. But in your case, prayer was effective no matter what state you live in or what country you lived in. Yeah, well, they, they, start, they, they were affecting not only circumstances but a young man growing up well prayer f forces you to practice faith mm -hmm. you can't pray without faith because of, otherwise you're just talking to the four walls in the room yeah. you're in mm -hmm. so it, it, it enables your faith and when your faith is enabled through prayer it gives God room to move yes, sure. and exactly. so that that I, I encourage you know whoever watches do not stop praying and don't just pray to the walls. Understand that you're practicing your faith. Give yourself a high five yeah. or a pat on the back because if you think you don't have faith every time you open your mouth to speak to, to God in prayer, you're practicing that faith. I love that. So uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to go to one of our uh, sponsors and uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna talk a little bit about amino acids. Amino acids, this one right here is all day you made. It's kind of like the Swiss army knife of amino acids. It's got B6, B12 glutamine, coconut water. It has everything as well as essential amino acids. If you don't know what essential amino acids are, essential amino acids are the thing that make the branch chain amino acids work. So if you do not have essential amino acids in your branch chain amino acids, and you're trying to figure out why your amino acids suck, that's probably a good reason why. So come by, get all day you may, because you want to do it all day when you're in the gym. Swing by 7420 District Boulevard or call 661-282-8840 and ask for Steve for all your sports supplement and nutrition needs. Hey, hope you like that, man. Steve's one of those guys that he's infectious. So go check him out at Sports Vanders West over on yeah. District Boulevard. So. so so you were talking about some stuff, and I want to know, and I hope I'm not jumping too far ahead, Tom. No. You, can, you can stop me if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know at some point I, you got... I, I could. <laughs> I could. <laughs> he just gave me power. <laughs> Tom, you stop me all the time. So it's just what we do, right? <laughs> Zing. Um, you got into boxing at one point. Yes. Yes. I was uh, 12 years old. 
uh, I had uh, my mom's brother. We lived in Tucson, Arizona at the time. And he started going to this boxing gym. And, and I never thought of boxing. I knew my dad liked boxing. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to please my dad. And so I go, I end up at this boxing gym. And man, did I catch on quick. I was, I've been a, nat, you know, I've always been a natural athlete, mm -hmm. but never did I think I would get, you know, as good as I did, as fast as I did it. Let me, let me, let me be a if little. If you look at his nose, it doesn't. Yeah, actually... it's, <laughs> yeah, my nose tells. Oh, you were a born like that? Yeah, no, my nose tells a different story. It says that I wasn't as good as I'm preaching right now. No, um, but I, I jumped in and I got really good, really fast. And and uh, it's funny because it took a lot of me getting my butt kicked first. Cause I, man, I could jump rope, man. I could hit the pads, hit the punching bag. I looked like a champ. But as soon as I got in that ring and stuff, it's like, what's that saying Mike Tyson says, right? Everybody's got a plan. Everybody's got a plan until they punch, until you punch them in the yeah, mouth. Till you get, yeah, until you get punched <laughs> in the mouth. And so, but, but it was definitely uh, an incredible journey into, um, just this arena, this area of my life that I did not know I could express myself. It was almost, you know, before Christ, like boxing was a little bit, uh, was a part of my salvation in a way because it mm. kept me physical, it kept me active, it kept me disciplined and very um, uh, intentional. Beca became part of your identity. Too, absolutely. Didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I'll let my fist do the talking. Mm -hmm. I'll I have to keep my body in shape. And yeah. yeah. Well, hey. there's a demeanor that, that a fighter carries, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I never got messed with in school, really. Yeah. And I think it was more just because of my demeanor. I never told anybody I boxed, but, you know, you just, you know, it, you know forget you. <laughs> and, and I'm <laughs> sure we'll talk more about that stuff yeah. on, on muscle, muscle matters. matters. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, coming up. But, yeah. um, then so that brought you into high school right yeah yeah so i did yeah I, I started uh in middle school and then eventually brought it into high school uh i, I don't know if you want and were to you share still moving story. around a bunch at this point yeah so so the most consistent uh air uh era of my life was my i think freshman and sophomore year mm -hmm. i i did the same uh, i went to the same high school my freshman year and then halfway through my sophomore year u.s marshals picked up my dad and he was extradited to california and uh that just kind of messed there you know switched his everything <laughs> around and and yeah but i i continued boxing through then yeah mm. and god had a plan for you and all of that absolutely um absolutely well god was already moving in my dad's life mm -hmm. right and and um i just didn't believe him you know i'd seen too much and so um, yeah. m miracles happened they when my do. dad was, my dad prayed to get arrested. My dad mm. prayed to get wow. caught. That's a new yeah. tactic. Yeah. He prayed. He said, God, I can't carry this burden anymore. I, I want to get caught and make things right. Even if I have to spend my whole life in prison, mm. I'd rather do that than, than, you know, uh, forfeit my integrity. Sometimes you. you need a change of scenery to change your life. <laughs> yeah. Change of scenery. Of that course. would be Mars, big time. <clears throat> Mars is a big yeah. change of scenery. But, but you, yeah. you said, you said that recently, like you were talking, worked with a bunch of prison people and a lot of them would tell you, well, we need to be here. Yeah. Well, yeah. what, what, what I, what I used to hear when I was a, chaplain for the California Department of Corrections and I'd go uh, do chapels in the prison system a lot of the the people would tell me we're exactly where we should be because this is what changed our life oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, absolutely. these were things that have you know get, we've been able to to get a quiet place not doing the knucklehead stuff that mm -hmm. we were doing when we were on the outside and we were able to focus and God got our attention yeah. well we've all heard about jailhouse conversions yeah, that yeah. you want to see them last. But I've seen a lot really matter, really stick. And I've seen so many uh, people do great works for God inside the correction oh, yeah. system. Yeah. I have. I really oh, have. yeah, we have. Well, I, I mean, I, I got a call from a warden one time at the, <laughs> uh, at the Wasco State Prison. And I, uh, we, we were down there doing ministry in collaboration with Big Joe. Yep. And um, in doing that, uh, he told me, he goes, hey, you got to tell Joe to back off the baptism. I go, Why? <laughs> and he goes, well, Tom, he goes, yeah, we're not gonna, you, you've got all <laughs> these totally inmates wanting to get baptized and they want to do it in water submersion because that's what he's telling us. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, we just can't allow these inmates to put each other under water because <laughs> yeah. bad things <laughs> They might not come back. Yeah. That's a bad And yeah, so I had to call idea. Joe and I go, dude, you're doing a good job. But the, you know, the, the warden just wants you to back off and tell them when they get out find a local church yeah. and then where they could do it like the Catholics. And I was well, going to say super soaker, baby. <laughs> well, well but it was just funny because I mean, people are very effective in there. Yeah. Pastor Ron and I would go in there many a times and there'd people would come in in uh, the orange jumpsuit, uh, like over at Wasco and they'd go, Hey, Pastor Tom, Hey, Pastor Ron, you guys told us 
several yeah. years ago that if we kept that up, we'd be here. So hello. <laughs> well, we, uh, wow. You guys came in wow. to see us. Wow. Well, we, 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 we have we, a guy in our church that um, had murdered a guy. Yeah. And and now he's like one of the biggest street evangelists there is. Oh, he's, yeah. he's Tony crazy. Sancho. Tony, you, yeah, I, loved him. I went to Israel with him. <laughs> yeah, he beat, you, y'all he, know who we're he, talking he about. He beat me in a foot race. <laughs> did he? Really? He did, but I was carrying a backpack. Okay, all right. I had a forty pound pack on me. Well, 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 keep us going, Adam, because yeah. um, your story gets profound. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So to touch to touch base, one one last thing. My dad. My dad. Uh, uh, he wasn't a jailhouse conversion. He was a prior to jail conversion who affected. Jail, who who impacted the jailhouse for conversion? Yes. So it was really neat. He 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 was the tea bag that affected his environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so so, um, yeah. Let's let's go through that season. So I come come high school, you know, I've ha- I just had a year and a half of consistency in my life, some normalcy. I I had friends, you know. I never kept friends because it was pointless to have. I even till. Till just recently, I've I'd never had a best friend in my life because I moved so much, and so. Oh, you're breaking my heart. I yeah, mean, no, <laughs> now I no no I got best friends now. No, I just but didn't. but uh, but anyway, yeah, coming through uh, that season into high school, I mean, I had to immediately get to work. You know, my dad, my dad went to prison. He was extradited to California. That means we had to leave everything yet again after just a couple years of consistency, and so any hope that I had that. We were going to experience normalcy just went out the window and and immediately uh i, st- I started working you know i'd work with an uncle he'd pay me 40 bucks a day i'd get up at four in the morning we get home at 10 p.m right and my mom was going through some hard stuff and and it wasn't working a whole lot and so i kind of had to step up and provide for the family for a little while and um you know i just i i never had time to get into partying as a result i never had time to get into that you know that uh mindset i was too focused on diapers and and mm. you know food in the refrigerator mm-hmm. so well, god used it to keep you from some stuff well yeah i mean like. that's one thing i i you know hindsight is 2020 mm-hmm. right that's what they say and it I always look, is oh and yeah. i look and i look back and i say wow okay god i i could see i could see you know and people look at me and they look at my dad and they they that was your that's your, that was your dad. I said that is my dad. You know, that's <laughs> it's the same. You know, it's still my dad. And, <laughs> and you'd think, you know, based off of his lifestyle and 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 the one we lived with him, that I'd be some sort of criminal. Or it's just it just goes to show the miraculous power of an unknown plan. Yeah, and that yeah. Bad? because if you're out there and you're not sure that you have a purpose. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. You know, God's got a plan. You just have to get a hold of it. Get around people that can encourage you yeah, and give yeah. you a vision for that. So. Well, I think I think I'm, I'm going to speak to you guys for a second. I think that a lot of people have this this feeling inside of them from the time they're children that yeah. they that they do have a purpose. You know, uh, mm-hmm. in in scripture, you know, the Bible says that eternity lives in our hearts. Mm-hmm. We we will mm-hmm. never fully feel home until we're reconciled to the Father. And so I t- I encourage whoever's watching that little sensation. It's not you're not crazy. That's a that's God's purpose wanting mm-hmm. to just flow flow like a river out of you. It's just uh, like Pastor Tom said. It's about getting around the right people that are going to see your gifts, mm-hmm. call them out in you, and push you towards that purpose which God has called you for. Well, you know, as you say that, Adam, I mean, there are people out there, but there's a nudging process Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Has, Absolutely, right? yeah. You know, Once when, you're indwelled with the Holy Spirit, it's yeah, yeah. you understand conviction. But one it, of yeah. the things you said, and I like to point this out because I think it's been so profound and monumental in importance in my life in my success in my walk and marriage and children and everything else yeah getting around the right other people that are going to build you up like yourself and tom and you know the guys on my team and and um having those people to hold you accountable one but also to just kind of be around and have fun while you're also serving the lord well and i think a a big part of that oftentimes i deal with a lot of youth you know being in the high schools through fca and a big question is like how do how do I choose those people? How do I find those kind of people? And oftentimes I just tell them, come to church. <laughs> well, yeah, you <laughs> come know, come you, hang yeah, out with us. You, you know, as, as we've talked about it, and we're going to break some of your stories up on other yeah. shows yeah. that you'll be uh, um, prompted to watch. Yeah, good luck with this. I'm sorry, guys. No, 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 no <laughs> because we're going someplace. So I, I think about the profound day that you and I met. Mm. It was it was it was on Halloween, right? Yep. yep. And you yeah. were just given some news. That's right. Yeah. You were just given some news that hey, we don't need you any longer. 
mm-hmm. in youth ministry. And they were closing down the Spanish ministry. Yes, that I yes. Passed and for and so I was sitting there at the bingo booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw Adam and I sat there and, and I had this draw to you that I'm like, man, I just can't sit here and not do that. So I remember mm-hmm. walking over there and going, hey, if you're interested in another journey, yeah, let's go have coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said, hey, I'm going to Starbucks. I remember that. You said, you, you want to come? We can talk a little bit. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> it can't get worse, right? Yeah, I just at this point, cool, it, whatever. Stranger, let me get in this truck with you. <laughs> and no, I'm kidding. But 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 it was because it, it was it was a, a moment that I had didn't know you. I, yeah. I I you know I had heard about Adam and the gifts, and we just started a journey. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we we did. We started a journey that um that that I think brought in some things. I mean, you know, how did you meet Paris? Yeah, uh, I met Paris in Lindsay, California when I was visiting for college. I used to live in Tucson. I stayed for college when my family moved back. Uh, we, once my dad got out, we eventually moved back because they owned a uh, duplex out there. And then they moved back. I had, you know, I had my college paid for. I was playing football and I worked for the U of A. And so, um, you know, I, I stayed and uh, I came to visit one time I, and I would go into Tony's Pizza. Her family owns it in, you know, in Lindsay, Porterville, and Visalia. I go into Tony's mm-hmm. Pizza and I see this just gorgeous girl. And I and I had a girlfriend at the time. Oh, I didn't know and that. I wasn't saved. Did, so. did, 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 <laughs> yeah. Paris knows the story, right? She knows, She's going to know now. So oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, she does. She does. Oh, she, wow. she was dating someone too at the time. And so, um, but yeah, I just, I, I met, I saw her there and I thought she was my sister's age. I thought she was still in high school. So I said, you know, off limits. You know, I was ni- I was 18 or 19. I said, no, but eventually what ended up happening is I moved to Lindsay and we each both found out, you know, she found out I wasn't my sister's boyfriend because she thought I was her boyfriend. And then I found out that she wasn't my sister's age. So two very key pieces of information <laughs> there. And we weren't even searching. I wasn't searching for a relationship. At that time, I'd broken up with my girlfriend and she wasn't with that guy anymore when I moved back. So we... Uh, uh, I'll fast forward to McDermott Field House. I was a fitness instructor there. I remember and, McDermott. Field. And I and I met her um, officially because she taught Zumba before me. Probably two months after I started, she came in to teach Zumba before my class, and she'd take over my class time. So I forced her to stay. I had put my hands on the door and I said, "Hey, <laughs> since you want to take up so much of my class time, you're staying for my class." <laughs> you know. That's funny. And and the rest is history. She punched me that day. <laughs> Did she? True story. Where, yeah, where at? She, uh, right, in the mouth, right in the face. <laughs> so it, this is a true story. Oh, but I, I, was, I, I, I taught boxing fitness. Uh-huh. And so um, I, there was this. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I don't need a girlfriend. And, I'll yeah. marry this girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's funny is I actually called out that I was going to marry her when before we even dated her. Really? Anything. Did yeah. you tell her this? No. She had no <laughs> That's idea. smart. I actually <laughs> I did tell, I, I told her that day with a smiley face because I didn't have the guts to put it in words. I just, I got her number. That's a. You that's a whole nother session uh-huh. for itself. But yeah, um, I was a boxing fitness instructor. So there's this moment where everybody I have everybody I had like 40, 50 students had them all get in a circle and I put on this pump up music. I'd had the pads and then the body pad and I'd call them one by one. Let's go one, two, one, two and all this stuff. Before we started class, she says, I'm, I'm going to, okay, but I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> but she, oh, she, she said, okay, but I'm going to punch you. She said that, right? And joking, you know, but now I'm like, oh, it's your turn. You know, yeah. I, I called her out and I, and I was planning on making her work. And so here we go. One, two. And on the one, two, on the two, she hit the edge of the pad and punched me square in the face. And I was like, you, you actually hit me. <laughs> and she, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Not. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it, w- it was shortly after that, that we were at, you know, back at Tony's Pizza. And we didn't have like, it, that was the most I kind of got to see of her. And at Tony's Pizza, she's, you know, she's bringing out this pizza. It's orange blossom. It's a huge, it's packed. My parents brought this girl that they wanted me to marry. She was like the perfect <laughs> Latina with, you know, she, she, she'll iron my clothes and cook food for me. And, and that was their idea of perfect girl for me. And so they bring her and, uh, and what ends up happening is uh, she brings out a pizza mistakenly, it was for pickup and she thought it, you know, her uncle Mark that it was for there. So she comes out and she's like, Francisco, Francisco. And then finally it gets too hot. She goes, Panchito, she starts screaming. <laughs> And I lean over to my mom. She's on my left. And the girl that they brought for me is on the right. But it's so loud. I lean over and I, I leaned over and I said, hey, mom. And she goes, yeah. 
And I said, you see that girl over there? She says, yeah. I said, that's the girl I'm going to marry. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and a great that, story. Yeah. Well, we, we, Mike, Mike let down. He let me down. He let me down. Uh-oh, we you, had a, you had a responsibility here today and <laughs> didn't do it. You ha- there's a question we always ask our guests, and you just answered it. Okay. What is something about you that we don't know? Yeah. Mike, I- we're going to have to dock his pay. Okay. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> He's just the not, boss. Not, my, not mine, though, right? No, no, I'm no, still so good. that means more? I've paid okay. more money? <laughs> <laughs> So, so, but yeah, that's cool. That, yeah. What, what a neat story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, so, and, and you know, there again, as, as, as I think about it, and if you're out there and you're young and in love, there were some things that you and Paris had that you didn't know about each other, right? Yeah. That, yeah. that, that came back up in um, later life that you had, yeah, you, you had to deal. But it's interesting that God's put in your heart that that's who I'm going to marry. Yeah. Because it wasn't coming without baggage. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that then, but yeah. yes. <laughs> when I said baggage, I mean, Paris is a beautiful woman. Yeah. But there was things in her life. Yeah, that, absolutely. That, that when you're out there, when you become one flesh, you buy into that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so so I, I love the fact that as you're, 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 you're moving through life, you're making decisions, and you and uh, Paris are married. You have three wonderful young boys. Yes. Yep. that are just like you yeah <laughs> she'll tell you the exact same oh, thing oh i yeah. know yeah. and and as as you have that life you're you are actually um training up young men that are prototypes of you yeah, absolutely and i know paris uh sometimes doesn't see the plan in that right yeah yeah, yeah she, it's, she, it's, she, th- she thinks your house is like that fitness gym right <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah it's a little bit crazy it's yeah, hectic it that's for you sure. got three great boys yeah. bring us back into maybe um, uh, we're going to talk about the big give on uh, ministry um, uh, um, uh, matters, matters. Yeah. and we're going to talk about your fitness on muscle matters. But but bring us to how you got the idea for the big give, and then we'll oh, talk yeah. about the big give there because I think yeah. that's part of you. Yeah, absolutely. You, Adam, what I've known about Adam is he always had a heart to give back. Yeah. That's something that I've yeah. always noticed yeah. about you, yeah. and you don't like to give back in a small way. No. <laughs> <laughs> You do the like shutting down streets in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I, you know, I had, I had a re- I still I have a real estate business, but when I was, uh, you know, when I was I, I was in that business, we had set a goal for three years. We had to set a three year goal to meet this, you know, this, uh, you know, this this specific place where we wanted to. I, I was young. I was twenty four, I think, or 20, 24, 25. and and I said, well, okay, this is our money mark. This is where we want to be in savings. This is what it's going to take to buy our house. And this is what, what it's going to cost us to be debt free. And, uh, and this is what we want to give away. We want, we want to be able to give. And so we had set this three year goal in January and it, or actually the November of the year prior. And so, um, I didn't think about it till come January and I'm looking at the goals and I said, okay, I've got, you know, I got to get to work. Well, I'm, I'm so busy working the whole year that, you know, when it comes time to November, you know, to check numbers and check everything that's happened in my life, kind of look back for the year, I, I reflect and I said, I, you know, I stopped and I looked at the numbers and then I looked at, oh my gosh, yeah, we bought a house. Oh my gosh, yeah, we were debt free. Oh my gosh, yeah, we've given this. I, I started realizing that a, a goal that we had set for three years, we had hit in 10 months. Mm. And so I, I immediately, it was the greatest feeling in the entire world for about 20 minutes <laughs> and then I was like well what do I work for now you know and so this is where the big give comes in I, I closed my office door you know I called Paris and I said baby hey do you realize what we've accomplished <laughs> what, what what's been done here and she says oh my gosh yeah you're totally right I forgot about that and I said look and when we've reached this and this and this and this and she was like oh my gosh and I said but what do I work for now and she says well I don't know I mean you've been wanting a new car and and she didn't go on all things material, but you know, she, she was kind of naming things. And I said, man, that just doesn't, I, that won't motive. That doesn't motivate me, uh, you know, material things or, or, you know, going places. I mean, you know, I've been places, but it just, you know, I, my dad was a fugitive, you know, to, to, <laughs> I've been to a lot of states, yeah. a lot of different Covertly. Places. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, when I thought about it more, you know, I just, I ended up closing my office door, you know, and, and I started, um, I got into prayer. And I said, God, I said, I, I don't, I, this is incredible. Thank you. I got into praise first. I praised him so much. I worshiped him. And then I prayed and I said, God, what do I work for now? 
What, what am I supposed to do? What give, give me that motivation? What, what, what do I do? And then uh, I prayed for about an hour and then I figured I'm just hungry. So I just need to go eat. <laughs> so I go upstairs, heat up my um, lunch. And then I, I end up running into this guy named Young True, Chinese guy, mm. thickest accent. He won't mind me talking about this. I got love for you, Young. And it thickest Chinese accent. He believe, He's a believer. And I said, Young, I said, I'm going to can I share something with you? But you know my heart, so I'm not boasting. I'm not gloating or anything like that. I said, here's my predicament. And I explained to him, you know, three-year goal, 10 months. Don't, don't, I'm feeling a little bit lost right now. He says, he looks at me, and I'm only using the accent because he would not, he okayed this. He looks over at me. He says, Adam, he says, what are you doing in your business to further the kingdom of God? And I said, well, you know, my immediate response, because, you know, I know everything, apparently, you know, at that time. I was, and I said, uh, well, we tithe and, and we give and, you know, we, we serve. And, and he stops. He said, no, no, He says, what are you doing with your business to further the kingdom of God? And it's like, boom, a, like it, the, the switch went off. And I didn't even finish. I just saw young. I said, you're an answer to prayer. I'll explain later. I wrap up my food. I go into my office. I slam the door. I put on some worship music and I have this whiteboard that's pretty big, probably if you turn this sideways. And, and, I, and I start praying and I'm walking around and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm writing and I'm praying and God's giving me this vision and I'm praying and I'm writing. And God tells me, he says, Adam, he says, you've got to make your clients a part of everything you do. And so I said, wow. I said, okay. And so I'm praying, writing, praying, writing. By the time I was done, there was, there was no space on that whiteboard. It, it, I, and I was like, I was out of breath, you know, like I'd done a workout or something. And, and God had given me this vision to just, you know, make the people a part of what I did. So that year I just, I, I, I told him, hey guys, we're doing, um, I'm going to be doing a surprise. I'm calling it the big give. You have no clue what it is and I'm not going to tell you. And we're going to tell you yeah. on Muscle Matters. There you go. I mean, okay. Ministry Matters. On ministry Matters. Okay, yeah. so we switch? Yep. Okay. So, so, yeah. so you've got to watch Sorry, Ministry you Matters. Gotta, yeah, go yes. to Ministry yep. Matters. Yeah. The rest is incredible. It's so, pretty cool. So we're taking a break now yeah. for our sponsor and uh, for Lucky's Rescue. And Adam, I'm okay. going to put you on the spot. Oh, man. All and right. You can uh, kind of give uh, John and Meredith a shout out. <laughs> Over okay. there, at Lucky's Rescue. Okay. And what do you have for us? Okay, we've got we've and got that, piglet. That'll, that'll come up on the screen. So. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Okay, piglets, puppies, three male and two female. Good with dogs. Good with cats. Good with kids. Oh, oh I love that. They, they, hey, they're oh. they're they're there to this be tradable by you. Oh. Oh, that's oh a man! One. Why would you guys do this to me? That's not, this is now you gotta fair. go. You gotta go get them. This just this isn't fair. They're so cute. These little puppies, and they're all different colors too. That's, yeah. that's miraculous. Oh, so happen. there again, if you want to go to oh, um, Lucky's Rescue, uh, you know, and you want to adopt them, I think um, please you, do. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny. <laughs> or you're going to. Yeah, please do. You know, it's funny. Don't let see this. It's funny because John and Meredith sometimes will tell us, "Hey, the puppies aren't old enough to give away yet." Oh, so, but man. go out there and invade John and Meredith's space. Yeah. yeah. And say, "Hey, put us on the list for um, two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two or three so, at minimum. And if they're happy you're there, tell them Mike sent you. And if they're not, tell them Tom sent you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that man. won't be as pro- that wasn't surprise. fair. So so move yeah. us forward because you're no okay. longer in real estate. And tell us what the adventure that you're on now, and we'll bring that back up in Ministry Matters. Okay, so the adventure I'm on now, uh, last year, actually the year prior, uh, twenty would it be 2020, uh, God tells us to that we're going to start a church in Lindsay, California. And, and you were so excited yeah. to hear that, right? No, I cried. <laughs> I that. Yeah, no, I, I literally... I, I didn't tell and, Paris. And those weren't tears of joy? No, absolutely. They were <laughs> like Jonah's Cause, tears. I was like, no, I don't want to Because Adam there. used to tell me during our time together, there's one place I'm not going to start a church. And where was that? <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, California. Yeah. <laughs> and, don't and ever tell you have God saying, you're not going to do anything. You have a saying yeah. you always say about when you tell God what you're not going to do? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to move to Hawaii for a church now. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I don't think it works quite I, like that. I refuse, God. I'm not reverse going to psychology Hawaii. on the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a reverse genius. He might, he might know but, what I'm doing. <clears throat> but, uh, but no, um, yeah, you know, God tells me, I, you know, we're, we're opening a church in Lindsay. And I said, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Oh, no, thank you. you know, I was like, oh, thanks, God. No, no, thanks. <laughs> And uh, I didn't tell Paris, I and I knew, and I knew that it was God, and I knew, and I was devastated. 
I, I didn't want to go back. I have trauma in Lindsay. I have, you know, family members in Lindsay. I have so many crazy things that so many val valid reasons not to go. And uh, weight gain is another one because my grandma's cooking. But um, <laughs> we'll talk about that on Muscle Matters. Yes, we will. And so, uh, you know, I don't tell her. I don't tell her. And I knew for about I knew for about a year. I know. And she she didn't she didn't know. So finally, go ahead. Go ahead. So, no, I'm, I I want you to leave them on that cliffhanger yeah. for ministry matters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, that's a good that's a good place to leave off. Go <laughs> check out the rest of the story. The boss is charge. <laughs> well, I I think it's a good place to pick up. Yep. Yeah, I like so, that. I like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So so Adam, let's let's wrap it up for this segment of your life on okay. something that maybe we haven't touched on that you want to leave with the audience. Uh yeah. Um. It. it I'll just lead back to that Bible verse in Isaiah, you know, yeah. Isaiah 58, you know, this is the Adam Perez version. It's not out yet. Uh, <laughs> wherever God guides, he provides. Mm. Um, when, when you have an attentive ear to, to the word uh, of God for your life, um, wherever he points you, he's going to he's going to set you up for success. And it may not look like what you think it's going to look Ooh, like, but man, good. but man, is he ever present. So. You know, that that for me is, I think, what I'd like to kind of just close on is just, guys, just understand that purpose, that little nagging that you feel within you. Um, once you get around the type of people that are going to cultivate it mm -hmm. and, and, and help you push it through to fruition, um, you know, it, it, God just, he just opens the floodgates for you to succeed in ways that you would never, ever think. And never buy into on your own initiative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, it's <laughs> definitely a divine calling for sure. I like it. So, Mike, want to close this up? And, yeah. Well, um, all I all I want to say is thanks, guys, for watching. Yeah. Give credit um, to our um, uh, Alex back there. Alex, our director. Yeah. We couldn't do any of this without Nathaniel, Nathaniel Tui, running the whole company, Joanne. basically. Joanne, Joanna for doing basically all of our publication yeah. and copywriting, all of our emails. If you our, have, don't get the yep. daily devotional emails. Go to dailyfreedom.org to check that out. And uh, Taylor and Tessa Touchstone. Yep, for being creative. I got to say Tessa Jimenez now, right? Tessa Jimenez. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. she's married <laughs> yeah. and Super loud and cool. proud. And Danny's part of our team. And Adam's going to be joining us more. So uh, I, I, I want to leave Danny alone today after the, the Cowboys upset. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Yeah. I, I, I think God all is Cow good, is he not? Huh? <laughs> I said God is good, is he not? <laughs> I got so, the Seahawks today. I'm a Bronco fan. So. Uh, Thank, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. God bless. God, God bless, bless you guys.